Hi, this is Mingyao from Ozen Engineering, and in this video I'll be showing you how to set up a 3D explosive simulation in Autodyne. We're going to pick up where we left off last time with uh, a 2D analysis, and I'll just duplicate these first two blocks. We're going to make some changes in the geometry. In the 2D analysis, we specify that the 3D components are going to not participate in the simulation. So we're going to have to undo that in this model. We no longer need our 2D surfaces and we'll select our 3D components and activate them for physics. So right click suppress for physics or activate for physics. Going back to workbench, I want to double check the properties. Right now the analysis type is set to 2D. We'll switch that to 3D. And now we can go ahead with our setup. Alright, we have a model here and let's work our way down from top to bottom here. Uh, this is our copper liner. We have uh, the sphere which we made a plastic. And then we have an explosive material here, C4. So that's all defined as, as I've shown in the previous video and you can look at some of the information here uh, in the material section. We don't need any contacts and we can typically just use standard meshing. Nothing fancy there either. Uh, the analysis are set up here. The key thing here is that if we want to use uh, there is a SS explicit dynamics simulation which is available in Mechanical Enterprise. You can see this is a license currently used. But this license does not allow advanced simulations like the multi-material Euler simulation we're going to do here. So we need to come out of this and switch to a different license. You can see a license pre preference here and we're going to specify Autodyne Prep Post. Using the Autodyne Pre Post license allows us to set up the simulation as a multi-material Euler so we can model an explosive simulation. Okay, going back to this, uh, another thing that I forgot to change is that we need to select all of the parts and set this to Olarium material. And then when we go to our analysis settings, you can see the Olarium domain getting defined for me automatically. We can display where the global coordinate system is right here. So we want to move the coordinate system somewhere over here and create a box that encompasses this model. So let's go ahead and do that. If we scroll down the analysis settings, so here, going back a second here, you can see the end time is set to be a fairly short duration. Everything else is set uh, left as automatic. The domain size is need to be set to manual. And we're in millimeters here, so if I look at what a 10 millimeter box looks like. You can go back and you can see that's uh, starting here 10 by 10 by 10. So we want to adjust that accordingly. If I click on a point, we can see that this vertex is 0, minus 14, and 0. So let's go ahead and try to change that. So if I do, for example, um, We switch to that you can see we're now here so we want this to be um, on the z-axis to be over here we want to extend extend the y-axis and the x-axis looks okay so we need to shift this whole box over a little bit so let, let's go ahead and do that so 
that means the z axis should be let's say minus 15 and we'll make it uh, 15 units in length here okay so now we have two surfaces that lies right on the symmetry plane we can adjust the y axis so right now y axis starts at minus, minus 14 let's go to minus 20 and we'll make it uh, let's say 35 see how this looks okay and perhaps uh, we make this a little bit less it's symmetric so 10 millimeters looks okay here so if we make this 10 we have to make this minus 10 and that then gives us a volume to consider um, so we have our Olerian volume size. We want to make the minus x phase a rigid phase, and then uh, the kind of upper z a rigid phase. So this simulates as if it's symmetry, and the, the outflow will be in all of the other areas. So that's all we need to do for this analysis. Um, the last part we want to define is a detonation point. So we want to detonate it somewhere around here but a little bit up. So this is minus 13, uh, zero, 0, minus 13, 0 would be a good place to detonate. So let's go ahead and say detonation point. Um, let's set it to 0. And you can also click on location to change. So if we Click here, but I'm gonna maybe maybe 12. That's a good point. So we're gonna detonate the initiate the detonation here, um, and this is this is now all that we need to set up our simulation. Uh, oh, the other thing we want to do is that the Euler domain remeshes the model. If we zoom in. It shows us how big the elements are in the simulation. Um, when we have very large segments like this, we're not going to capture the spherical nature of our plastic very well. So maybe if we go up to 750,000, you can see now the, the mesh is much closer. So you may need a fairly dense mesh for 3D simulations to run this accurately. Um, the nice thing about running these simulations in Workbench so that is that it is automatically distribu distributed and parallelized, so we can just go ahead and hit hit the solve button. Uh, the last thing we want to double check here is that right now we're only saving 20 results. That's probably far less than what we want. So let's go ahead and do 200 results for this simulation. So this is running and we can see that the time steps, times have shot up dramatically. Initially estimate was about 45 minutes, now it's going to take about an hour to run. There's, there's a thing that we want to adjust here, so I'm going to uh, stop the simulation. Now, in analysis settings, I've run this, this simulation before, and one issue I've run into is that when the uh, material starts to deform, sometimes you may get unrealistic velocities in the analysis. Uh, there's a way to limit that. There's a maximum velocity cutoff, switch to meters per second. So you can see that the default velocity is extremely high, which means that as simula if there is some numerical uh, issues in the analysis, you may get very high velocities, and that causes the simulation time step to drop a great deal. You typically want to reset this maximum velocities to so that the simulation finishes in a reasonable amount of time. And we want to set it to be maybe twice the detonation uh, burning speed or explosive speed of the material. 
and in this case in this case uh, C force detonation velocity is on the order of 8,000 meters per second so if we make this for example 16,000 meters that's considered a uh, a reasonable number to to have the maximum velocity so with that said let's go ahead and solve the simulation again uh, we have to switch to the right units let's go back to the millimeters Okay, the simulation is completed. I reduced the mesh count to um, see, to ha half a million cells. And in this simulation, it took about two hours, two and a half hours to run. So let's take a look at the results here. We can plot some of the standard uh, deformation, for example. Uh, other uh, results we can look at include, we can go to the worksheet view. So because this is a explosive simulation, it's often helpful to look at the pressure and um, can add a few of these all together. So alpha is another good um, tells us when uh, the detonation of the explosives. And uh, Uh, maybe a plastic strain. So let's uh, get all of that data and take a look at the results. So we can see the explosion here. Come take a look at the alpha. You can see how much of it is detonated. And plastic strain energy. So we can look at the data through the workbench environment. We can also bring this information into Autodyne. And we can run Autodyne uh, either in the simulation or outside of it. So let's see if we can. So I'm going to save this project, then uh, we can open up Autodyne independently. Uh, and I might, I'll just go ahead and do that, Autodyne. Okay, let's try this again. R2. And we can just go ahead and open up Autodyne as a standalone system here. And we want to load the result files. So if we go to um, View Files. 
you can see this is analysis system, system E, and these are all the autodyne uh, results. So I can copy and paste this into my result viewer. And we can go ahead and pick any of these. So let's go ahead and maybe do the, the final one here. You can see we can go to a previous cycle. Now we're plotting the material location. We can plot the contour of pressure as well. Um, so you can make use of the, of the full autodyne capabilities for post-processing. And step through some, a few. A few time steps and see what happens. It's your status and I should have clicked on location here. There you go. We can also use the Autodyne option to create movies, so AVI, MPEG, or uh, animated GIF file. So <clears throat> this is a quick example to show you how to set up a Autodyne simulation in 3D uh, in using ANSYS Workbench. We can then post-process results in Autodyne, which gives you a lot more flexibility. I hope this is helpful. Uh, please contact us if you have any questions. We're at www.ozeninc.com. Take care. Bye-bye.